this is a bigger problem now than it ever has been. All of us probably go on Instagram five times a day for five minutes. And if it's not Instagram, it's probably TikTok. And if it's not TikTok, it's probably Facebook. And if it's not Facebook, it might be Twitter. The point is, you've got to be very, very careful. What happens when you come to from that understanding? I think a lot of us get very anxious because we realize, oh my God, I can't believe I just wasted 20 minutes. I can't believe I just wasted a half hour. Now I have to double, triple, and quadruple speed in order to get a lot of my things done. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was 964 Strategy Saturday, one powerful question that will help your relationship. Today, for episode number 965, are you jumping from distraction to anxiety? So... I believe that it was Dave Meltzer that taught us this and I Googled it and I found it. I think it's like a psychological thing, but I want you to think of a bullseye and it's going to have three layers and in the very center, you're going to have your comfort zone. The next layer out will be learning and then the furthest outmost layer will be anxiety zone. Many of us live in our comfort zones day to day. So the comfort zone is very little challenge. It's where you feel the most comfortable, where you can kind of show up and just be yourself. There's not a lot of challenge, just easy. The learning zone is where there's a good amount of challenge. It pushes you outside of your comfort zone. You're leveling up, you're growing, you're creating new skills, you're learning about yourself. There's a lot of different things happening there. The anxiety zone is kind of like you being underwater and you can only stay there for so long because you're kind of holding your breath. And I think a lot of us jump from comfort to anxiety, but I want you to think about this. I want you to think about distraction as something that is inside of our comfort zone, but oftentimes allows us to jump from quote unquote comfort to anxiety. So imagine this, I am watching mixed martial arts. I'm watching a big UFC fight a couple of weekends ago. And during one of the commercials, I pick up my phone and I'm watching car videos on Instagram or whatever it may be. And 10 minutes later, I become conscious of the fact that, oh my goodness, I've just wasted 10 minutes. The fights are on. I'm missing some of the fights because I've gotten lost down the rabbit hole. Now, it's not that big of a deal because I'm watching mixed martial arts. I'm not working. But imagine if you had that same thing happen to you where you're sitting at your desk and you're working. Maybe you're getting ready to post on social media for the day. You have this amazing reel that you created. You're getting ready to post it out to your community. And next thing you know, it's been 20 minutes and you have been in all of the rabbit holes of Instagram. What happens when you come to from that understanding? I think a lot of us get very anxious because we realize, oh my God, I can't believe I just wasted 20 minutes. I can't believe I just wasted a half hour. Now I have to double, triple, and quadruple speed in order to get a lot of my things done. Understand that what seems comfortable, if it is a distraction, is not filling your cup in the same regard as something that is actually a cup filler. So me watching mixed martial arts is a cup filler. I absolutely love it. But I know my experience is never the same if I have my cell phone. So much, in fact, where at the end of our days in our peak performance tracker, I don't know if they if it's on the optimal app yet, Alan, but we have a 1% win and a 1% improvement. So what is 1% win that happens today? What is a 1% improvement? My 1% improvement last week was when I am filling my cup, leave my cell phone somewhere else. Because oftentimes I will get distracted from my intention. And when I realize I'm not in alignment with my intention, I get anxious. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I just wasted that time. Oh, now I have to go back and do all the work that I was supposed to do. So ask yourself this question. When I am seeking comfort, when I am searching for comfort, when I am practicing comfort, am I actually leaning into distraction and doing myself a disservice and not filling my cup at the rate or in the way that I originally anticipated? Because if not, you're going to wonder why you're burnt out. You're going to wonder why you're anxious. You're going to wonder why you feel misaligned when you feel like you're doing all the right things. You know what this is a lot like? If you've ever bought one of those crappy sort of knockoff Amazon choice, uh, <laughs> nothing against Amazon here, but <laughs> chargers that don't work for your iPhone, a good Apple iPhone charger 
putting it on the charger for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 minutes will charge a lot of the battery. But if you've ever had a really crappy charger, you can put it on there for, you know, several hours and it does almost nothing and your phone ends up dying. It's kind of like that. If you're taking rest and relaxation with distraction, you're going to have very little recharge versus if you actually take real rest and relaxation, you can spend one third of the time for three times the outcome. And Kev, by the way, we do have an asset that we can provide to everybody, downloadable asset. So there'll be a link in the show notes. Kev, that was the one that you had on your PowerPoint at Next Level Live. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So shout out to Christina. Thank you for creating that asset. And we will put it in the link in the show notes. You should easily be able to, by the way, it'll be a Google Drive link. You can click it on your phone or on your computer if you're watching on YouTube. And you should be able to download it right to your phone and or computer very, very easily. Totally free. And you don't have to put in a mailing, uh, an, an email or anything like that. You just download it. Okay, that said, I wanted to bring something to the table that I did in group coaching recently, which I thought was really powerful, even though I explained it pretty terribly. I'm going to try to do a better job this time. So I'm a big numbers guy. Anyone who listens to this show knows that. And this is what I wrote down. If we really understood how much the distractions were affecting us, we would stop, but we don't notice it. And here's why. Imagine there's two people, okay, two individuals. We'll call them Sam, okay? There's Sam 1 and Sam 2. Sam 1 scrolls on Instagram for five minutes a day, five times a day. 25 minutes a day, no big deal, okay? Sam 2 scrolls on Instagram for 10 full 16-hour days straight, 10 full 16-hour days straight with 8 hours of sleep, 10 full 16 hours straight. Sam 1, 5 times a day for 5 minutes, which we are all guilty of, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. Both of them are the same. Let me explain the math. If you scroll on Instagram 5 times a day for 5 minutes each, that's 25 minutes. And you can do this in a calculator. I just did this right before this episode. That's 25 minutes. Now, if you take that 25 minutes and multiply it by 365 days per year, you get 9,125 minutes. If you divide that by 60, you get 152 hours. And if you divide that by 16 hours, you get 10 full 16-hour days. If you saw a friend scrolling on Instagram all day, every day for 10 full days, you would think they were losing their mind. You would literally call someone immediately and say they need help. But yet we're all doing that without knowing it because it's spread out across the year. I just wanted to take a quick second and give a shout out and a huge thank you to Next Level Podcasting Solutions, Kevin and his team. They have been incredible to work with, very flexible, on the spot with any questions that I have or any concerns that I have. When I first started out my podcast, I was doing everything on my own. I have no editing background. I have no podcasting background. I knew nothing about it. So I was bootstrapping all of this myself while I was still trying to take on my role as a full-time mom. And once I met up with Kevin and we had these discussions and I got on board with adding an editing team, oh my goodness, it just lifted this weight off of me. It lifted my time that I was spending doing my editing. And in the beginning, full transparency, when I was editing just my individual recordings, it was a little more manageable, not super manageable. And then when I started doing my interviews for the podcast, it was hours upon hours of me doing the editing that didn't include any of the promotional material that I am now getting from Kevin and his team, it wouldn't have been sustainable. I would not have been able to keep up with that. So I recommend Kevin and his team. They have done wonderful work in helping me grow my podcast. I have really enjoyed working with the editing team and it definitely feels like more of a team environment versus me hiring them to do a specific job. I mean, we all work collaboratively on 
the projects that I have. And I have these crazy ideas sometimes and they come up with a solution to fit my needs. I, I can't recommend them enough. I really enjoyed working with them. Kevin and the Next Level Podcasting Solutions, thank you so much for the work that you have done in the past and are continuing to do for me. I'm growing this community and growing this platform with a beautiful team that is working for me and with me to see my vision and help that come to life. So thank you again so much. I really appreciate you guys. So imagine an alternative universe where instead of scrolling five times a day for five minutes, you do it all at once. And every single year you take literally a week and a half off just to scroll and you do nothing else. This is a very dangerous thing. We live in a digital world. And Kevin and I love that you listen to us. We love that you listen to this show. We appreciate it. But we are trying to add value to your life. And this is valuable information. One of the most valuable podcasts in the world, in my opinion. And yes, I'm biased, but I really believe that to be true. Okay? We are not telling you you should be scrolling on Instagram looking at you know, stuff that really, quite frankly, will not help you change your life. This podcast will help you change your life. The content we post on social media is supposed to be inspiring and positive and truthful. Do not, do not let this distractions create anxiety and take your life over. This is a bigger problem now than it ever has been. All of us probably go on Instagram five times a day for five minutes. And if it's not Instagram, it's probably TikTok. And if it's not TikTok, it's probably Facebook. And if it's not Facebook, it might be Twitter. The point is, you've got to be very, very careful. I had one client, and I'll end on this. Um, shout out to this client. He'll know I'm talking about him uh, positively. I'm so proud of him. He had app limits as one of his PPT line items for a really long time. And it took probably four or five months. But we went from three apps. I think it was Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Snapchat to I'm like okay let's just get rid of one of them let's just get rid of one of them let's delete one so he did right there TikTok gone I said okay and by the way this person does not have a business that requires them to be on social media so keep that in mind okay eventually it was like okay let's get rid of one more let's get rid of one more what would it be got rid of Snapchat right there on the call deleted Snapchat on the call okay I think now he's down to Instagram and Facebook and I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100%, so don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure he just deleted Facebook or Instagram. I forget which one, but I know that his PPT line item only has one app now. And I think the limit is 15 minutes a day. I think he put the app limits on his phone to 15 minutes a day. Now, he works 72 hours a week. He's an engineer. He's unbelievable. And he's really, really hardcore focused on his goals. So I'm not saying everyone else has to do that. What I'm saying is that if you're, if you want, if you have as big a goals as him, you probably do have to do that. And he has very, very, very large goals. I remember, Alan, back in the day, this was, I don't know, five or six years ago, I was going to, I talked about this recently, I was going to a mountain in New York to learn how to snowboard. And we were driving there, my my partner at the time and I, and evidently the GPS, the GPS was not what it is today. It was a Garmin not connected to the internet, like the old school GPSs. Oh, and yeah. it took it took us to a boat, a ferry, and you had to take the ferry across this one of the Great Lakes to get to this mountain. I had no idea that was the case. They didn't say that anywhere. So when we got there, I realized that we were way off course. That was not my intention. My intention was to get to that mountain at a certain time. Think of it like this. We made a wrong turn based on what our intention was. And then I was like, oh my goodness, I have to make up time now. I have to make up time. I'm anxious because I just lost however many hours out of this journey and now I have to double my speed to get there on time. And I think a lot of us are doing that with, with our distractions. And if you think about it, it's like, you don't want to get distracted when you're trying to be productive. And really think about this because this is a, like a weird hyper-conscious thought. When you're trying to be productive, the worst thing for you to do is get distracted. When you're trying to fill your cup, the other worst thing for you is also to get distracted. I think we only think about it when we're trying to like achieve something. But when you're trying to refill your cup, every time you get distracted and you turn your cup away from what's filling it, all that stuff is just hitting the floor and you're losing out on it. So I think that's a good analogy to end this episode on. I have to get on a podcast here in five minutes. Next level nation. 
if you are like Alan and myself, and at one point in your life, or at one point in our life, we thought, I'd really love to start a podcast, but I don't know what the hell to do. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I love talking. I love talking about my message and what I'm passionate about, but I need help. Please reach out. I am happy to do a free call with any one of our listeners, totally free. I'm not going to try to sell you on anything. So much, in fact, where we actually just got a, a client recently, and when her and I jumped on the phone for the first time, she was like, so what does it take to work with you? And I said, oh, I didn't know that's what you wanted. I literally didn't, I genuinely didn't even think of that. I was just thinking of how can I help you get your podcast started? That's the goal. Add value. If it aligns and we work together, awesome. But next level podcast solutions, I would love to chat with you and add value to your life. Totally free. If you want to start a podcast, we can help you do it. Better than most. Better than almost anybody is what I would say. And if Kevin and I had Kevin and I, trust me, things would have been very different. I would say we would have been able to accomplish the same amount in half the time. That's what my brain has calculated. Speaking of which, Next Level Business Solutions, you've probably heard a lot about it. We've had some amazing mid-tros of clients that have spoken their truth. I, they always, whenever we get a, an intro or a mid-tro, rather, testimonial, I always just say, speak from the heart. We don't tell anyone what to say on those, by the way. We literally never do. We never have. All we say is this. Can you please make it a minute long and speak from the heart, whatever your truth is? Mm. And so thank you so much for anyone who has given us a testimonial. But the reason I'm mentioning this is I want to give a free call to anyone who has been considering coaching. Group coaching is really good if you've never done coaching and you've never had a coach before. And if you're out there listening and you're wondering, like, what is this coaching thing? What's the point of having a coach? Here's what I would say. Think of an athlete who's <clears throat> who's a hero of yours. They a lot of them attribute, and I've studied certain athletes, whether it's Tom Brady or Kobe Bryant or whoever. A lot of them attribute their success to coaches early on, and there's a reason because when you coach someone, you're you're outside the frame, so you can kind of see the whole picture. Not to mention, this is like what I do. So so what I mean by that is I don't sometimes garden and sometimes cook and sometimes fix cars. I'm all I do is coach. So I'm just really starting to understand it at a deeper and deeper and deeper level. I just surpassed my 1300th call. I too, just like Kevin, I'm not going to sell you anything. I love meeting our listeners. Kevin and I have a long list of people that we've jumped on the phone with and that we've met listeners all over the world. Some from Italy, some from South Africa, some from Singapore, some from Finland. We just want to meet you. We're so grateful that you listen to the show. Just uh, reach out if you want to dive into this coaching thing just a little bit. We can jump on a half an hour call and I would just love to meet you and I hope that you do reach out. And like Kevin and I said, we're not going to sell you anything. If you want to work with us, great. Honestly, that would be awesome. If it's aligned, that's great. Awesome. But that's not why we're doing this. Um, that would be great, but we want to meet you most importantly. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 966. It is Monday tomorrow. How your relationship with time is hurting you. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And yes, I second what Alan said. We want to get to know everybody at the deepest level we can, whatever that means. Because at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.